Greetings and welcome to Maisha Kazini. We are back with Joe for our first conversation with him this year. And uh, Joe is our resident, so to speak, uh, philosopher. And today we are going to be looking at issues of religion, faith, and spirituality. So welcome, Joe. Uh, thank you, uh, Wandia, for having me. And, and Happy New Year. I'll, I'll and, bet it's we are, we are mid, mid-February. <laughs> we are mid-February, so we can still say Happy New Year. Hmm. All right. So I think the biggest conversation in Kenya when it comes to religion is the Shakahola massacre. Hmm. And hmm. basically, of course, there are these stories erupting of people being misled by cults. And mm. the Kenyan conversation, the Kenyan argument mm. about these things is very linear, which is that mm. uh, these people who go to religion are stupid because mm. religion is a lie. We got mm. colonized through religion because we were duped by the missionaries who wanted something else. Uh, mm. so, um, so we must avoid religion. And these people are stupid because they are following religion. Mm. What is wrong with that argument? Mm. So thanks, thanks, Wendy. That's a really, really good question. So I'll start, I'll start by, I won't quote the book, but I'll paraphrase him. There was a, there's a philosopher was uh, by the name of Alastair Marketer, and he, has a, he had a very fascinating book, uh, which is called the title, uh, Whose Rationality, What Justice? And he makes a very compelling argument, and he says that uh, within uh, within the device of the Western world and Euro modernity, uh, there are particular ways of rationalization that are, uh, that and being rational that is actually privilege. There are, there are points of privilege. So, uh, for example, you go to Alliance, and you go to Alliance, and you go to University of Nairobi. Then you go to get a scholarship to Harvard. There's a particular way in which you see the world and it'll be a particular rational behavior that is isn't rational in the sense of that all human beings are rational, but it has, it's actually a positionality of privilege. That so it's like a, a, a rationality that is exclusive to a certain to people with certain experiences. Precisely, precisely. So and and in the same vein, and this argument, this argument of Shakahola, what it exposed in Kenya's public sphere was that there's a there's a disdain, uh, there's a disdain particularly among uh, you know progressives, you know what you call so-called progressives, uh, middle middle class types, uh, you know uh, intellectuals. It is there's a, there's a disdain towards uh, religion and that kind of religion, mm. forgetting that they are, they are operating from places of privilege and that for for most people, for most for the majority of people, uh, we, we all strive to make sense of our realities in, in, in rational ways, in, in, in kind of rational ways. But for majority of people, uh, going to a Mackenzie church, that's, that's the only space that you can access a kind of rational way to explain your reality. Yes. Because as human beings, we, our journey of life, we always try and explain our reality. That's it's part of we're all philosophizing, you know, mm. not, not in the academic sense of it, but in yes. in a way, uh, Kai Kressler uh, says in his book Philosophizing in Mombasa that even interaction of human beings, we're all trying to we're all trying to philosophize and trying to make sense of our 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 reality. So I mean that argument. I mean in in a nutshell, that argument is actually racist. It's actually classist. That mm -hmm. people who it's actually people who look down and say, you know, these people are the superstitious. They did go to alliance. Yeah, they, they did go to school. You know, it's you know, yeah. like they've been colonized. No, it, it's actually just a, yeah. it's actually a classist yeah. argument. You know, it's it's actually it's disdain. Uh, mm. ni madarao, mm. ni madarao. Mm. You know, you you know, you guys think that uh, someone who uh, goes and lifts up their hands and you know is 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 looking forward to understand their reality is beneath you but it actually it's a, it's a deeply deeply classist argument completely and it's actually and within our context in kenya it's it has it carries a baggage of madarao mm -hmm. mm. so mm. so people who would go to a cult like this are really uh, doing the human thing of trying to understand their realities exactly it's not that they are they are being stupid it's mm. not 
this is the best explanation they have gotten for the for the, the post colonial condition. Exactly. Let me give you an, 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 an example. Uh, recently, ESCC said <laughs> we have four, three thousand and something fake, fake, uh, fake, uh, uh, fake certificates in mm. KNH, Ministry of Trade, you know, within the government. So mm. you can imagine for your average Kenyan, mm. I mean, you're, first you, you go, you, you, you're going to school, uh, free primary education or whatnot, but it's 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 just not working. CBC it's not working, capitation is not is not moving well. So we're not getting proper education. Yeah. So that's the average that's that's your average person. And then you, you hustle through secondary school, your average Kenyan is still a four your average is not Kenyan. I mean we have gone up by now we're talking about 60, 70 percent of Kenyans are from four graduates. So that's where you are. And then and then you go to the chief's camp to get your ID you have to pay a bribe mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and it takes long. And then, uh, you know, you you live with an uncle or an auntie in Nairobi, you know, not in Nairobi, they try and help you get some college certification because majority, because of how we, uh, at least for the, last, for the last couple of years with the Matiangi rule, how we mark our exams, they are, they are, they're not based on the number, on, on merit of the kids, it's based on, available uh, available physical infrastructure either to go to university and then we we, we, we map it at that level yeah. so all these guys don't go to university so this this is this is the reality they don't go to university so you do some either some TVET course some stuff and you you meander your way through all all these are points where you're asking yourself you're asking yourself as a person asking yourself questions why am I not making it what's happening to me uh you know you're not you're not accessing the uh, the, the the elite spaces because of just structural and systemic uh, problems. And you so can this... see the inequality that there are some exactly. people who have an easier uh, path. They go, they Precisely. slide through all those obstacles fairly easy. Precisely. Mm. And then here comes a preacher who looks like you, talks your language, yes. talks your language, and you know he's talking about. Uh, he's charismatic and, and he's telling you, hey, your, your way to out of this thing, you have to do one, two, three, four. Mm. That's very appealing. That's very appealing to to that kind of person. Yes. And it's and it, and it's not irrational behavior. It's not their foolish and stuff. It's it's this is the best explanation of their reality. Mm. Because these people are appealing. To, to the people who go through these obstacles one after the other. And they exactly. need some relief, surely. You can't keep exactly. on going through that all the time. Exactly, exactly. So it's, 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 a, it's a best explanation of your reality because as a human being, we are, uh, I mean, I'll tell you an academic philosophy, as human beings, we philosophize. So you're like, oh, maybe actually yeah. this is why I'm not able to get to one, two, three, four. So you, 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 you'll get into that space and you'll, you'll participate. And then keep in mind because of again because of self because of the isolation is where the capitalism is very desolates you. It also yeah. gives you a sense of community. It gives you a sense of community. It gives you a sense yeah. of, of of hope. But but more important, which is which is which is very interesting in a bizarre kind of way. Mm. It also those kind of spaces be, become world making spaces because there's there's an internal aesthetic yes. in those kind of spaces. That that create create new pathways and new realities for everybody who's part of that thing. Mm. So it, in a kind of way, it becomes they become spaces of resistance. If we look at the internal logics, yes. Mm. Mm. Uh, because because what they be, what they start becoming, they become they become spaces of anti colonial struggle. Mm -hmm. Because they are they are moving away from the. The, the structures, the postcolonial structures. So they become, then the internal, internal space they become, there's a space of moving away from, moving away from the internal structures of, you know, the postcolonial reality. So how do they become abusive? I mean, mm. yeah, so I'm just that's asking, a good question. How, yeah, how does the, I get what you're saying, which is that these are spaces which provide relief, relief mm. and an alternative argument that mm. this is what people are seeing outside the doors of this cult or whatever. Mm. So, so when it starts becoming abusive, why, 
what what what's the the intellectual process that makes people uh, suppress that that uh, consciousness so i mean it's it, it's it's again it's as you said it's it's uh it's hope so people we will cling on to hope even if it's painful right oh. um, because because after all it's painful outside anyway exactly exactly because and the crisis for me the crisis for uh. me the, the the remedy has not been to to banish them but the mm. remedy when i look at it the remedy is that these places lack uh they lack a political intellectual project so it's actually so the same the same people who are disdaining these spaces need to go to these spaces to give these spaces an an intellectual uh, intellectual to make these spaces a political intellectual project. So it can move beyond it can move beyond the catharsis because these are these spaces only operate as spaces of catharsis and it's a relief. But you, you yes. can't say the level of relief, you know. Even even you know. And even, what they're you know, offering like, is abuse, really. They give exactly. it relief. But mm. what is replacing what you're being relieved from is abuse. Exactly. Because I mean, <laughs> even even forget even religion. Let me give you a, a very yeah. similar example. Yeah. How how Africans are club, club or go to discos and stuff. Yeah. Uh, for same space, it offers that catharsis. How mm -hmm. uh, even Fanon has written about this. How when you go to African spaces, even Black Amer Black American spaces, how we dance, mm -hmm. how how we dance, and you know we are shaking our bodies. Etc. You know women are shaking their bodies at that level. At that level. At that first level, is one is is one is one of is one of resistance because because within uh, the current edifice is supposed to move in a way. Your body is being your body, your body is a site of control. Yeah. So, so at the first level of even you know shaking, shaking your 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 body, regardless of the the moral argument, at that first level is a point of resistance. Yes. Because it's a because there's a catharsis that happens there. Mm -hmm. Our, our crisis is that, the control of your body by uh, moving it in the same way. Ex exactly. Okay. But unfortunately, unfortunately, we stay there. Yes. We it's stay like there dependent. because. <laughs> uh, we say we said that we can't you know you can't stay at the point or you can't stay in catharsis all the time you can't exactly. stay in you can't stay in catharsis so when you stay, and the things are with catharsis now it becomes abuse the next step is you stay there it becomes abuse oh okay just just pause there so um is it is it the staying there? Is it is the catharsis and uh, is abuse catharsis overdone, or is abuse a, another entity altogether? Abuse is another entity altogether, but okay. it's another entity altogether. Because when you stay there, you have to move. You have to move out of it. Like you, you, yes. you yeah. Because catharsis you know, is release. So you release. can't stay releasing. You have to now. You can say releasing. Else. Exactly. So and when, yeah. you, when you stay there, it becomes now, for instance, now, uh, we, now we over sexualize women's bodies, for instance. Uh, mm -hmm. but at, at the at the point of of women shaking their uh, you know, their what, what they're behind them, you know, that stuff and that stuff. At that point, at that first initial point, is a point of resistance. Yes. Within 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 the post-colonial experience, a point of saying, I'm defying the Victorian morality. I'm defying all these things that have been imposed on me that is meant to corral and, and coerce my body to move in a particular way. Yeah. But then now we have to now do the intellectual work. We have to do the spiritual work. We have to move. We have to, we have to... To, to create the social world exactly. where, from which we were running away to replace it. Exactly. The social world we, from which we were running away when we went for this mm. catastrophic relief. Mm. Exactly. But the, those, the, those people who are calling uh, the, those victims stupid, they don't get it. So they can't, the only thing they know is to send the police. Mm. Yeah, they, they don't know what intellectual work is. Then they know mm. the in fact, actually, maybe you can comment on. I mean, I got so surprised when people were saying, yes, the state should send the police, people should be arrested. That's not intellectual at all. No, 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 it's not. I mean, because I mean, it's disdain, it's mother out. 
It's yeah. things already because I mean, as I said, who's just which rationality? I already, I already think your, your activity is. I, I think you're rational. I think you're stupid. I've quote. I've I've, I've written an article and opened it. I've said religion is open of the masses, quoting Karl Marx, and that's yeah. not even what he actually he said. said. People, people, even, people don't even really say that, but people don't people are not read that whole chapter in Das yeah. Kapital to understand what he was actually talking about. So it's 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 it's, it's mother out. And that's all I can just say. It's mother out. It's the thing it's, that look at these victims as human beings who are doing the human thing. Of exactly. Doing relief. So exactly. what we should be providing is relief and a new world rather than yeah. calling them stupid mm -hmm. for where they were. Exactly. It's, it's for me. It's the 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 best example that I, I can I can think of now is when uh, in the New Testament when uh, uh, Saint Paul or Apostle Paul. When he was in, I think, in Rome, when he was in Rome or Greek, and he, and he, and he said, "Look, I said, you guys, I can see when I was walking in. I saw you guys. You have gods. And then you had you had one image that said that they are known God, and he, he uploaded them and said, you guys are religious. But let me now point you to now, uh, to now, uh, to now Christ. That's what he said. So he uploaded their religiosity. So for me, which is interesting, is that." Uh, for me, I applaud these people, not, not the Shakaola people, but I applaud people, I applaud people who are uh, religious because they're still human. Mm. Mm. In fact, my biggest worry is that, uh, you know, the disdain that, that's coming from people, they're actually more dehumanized because the victims are, they're still, because being uh, human beings, uh, human beings, uh, we, are, we are religious beings. Yes. Mm. We, we are, we are, our makeup is religious. You know, not just, and also rational at the same time. Uh, we're equal religious, and so our religiosity, our how we, our technique of asking, dealing with the, of asking metaphysical questions about origins, purpose, meaning, mm. uh, existence of existence of God. Uh, you know what the ambit of philosophy of religion is 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 a good thing. It shows that we are still we are still we are still uh, pursuing our humanity. Yes. Mm. 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 So, oh, what is it that colonial oppression does to us spiritually? Because mm. it sounds like uh, you've said that, <laughs> let me see if I've get, got it right, there's a drive in us to make sense of our world. Mm. And these people, these criminals are offering a place for people to understand their world, but they're not mm. offering an alternative social vision so that mm. the people, once they feel the release, they can go back to a healed society and not mm. have to suffer that way. Mm. Right. So is, is, col is colonialism religious? Because it sounds like it su suppresses religion. I don't know whether mm. I'm making sense. So no, you're making sense. And it's both, uh -huh. both, those statements are both true at the same time. Uh -huh. that, that it suppresses religion but it's also religious at the same time okay. because the grammar, the grammar and logics of colonialism uh, uh, had a uh, religiosity in them as the, that's why, that's why, that's what they call the colonialism as a civilizing mission. You know, they, yeah. it was, they were going, they were abolishing slave trade. So there was a sense of not just a moral superiority, but there was a religious sense in, in colonial, colonialism as as Europeans taking the place of God to the rest of the world, mm -hmm. so that's, that's that. So there, there's a grammar, there's a fundamental grammar of, of colonialism that is religious in that's, that sense. So it's a religious anti-religion. Exactly, it's if a contradiction. If Europeans are taking the place of God, then there's mm. no religion. But 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 taking the place of God and making that the, the religion, but then at the same time. Uh, At the same time, as you said, they're also suppressing other religions because it becomes it exposes uh, 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 religious activity exposes uh, their irreligious religiosity. I don't know if I'm making house of mirrors. Then, like for exactly, religion, it is. European it's a contradiction. Religion is a house of mirrors because it is. Oh Lord, that that's messed up. No wonder mm. people are getting into cults. It's messed up. It is. It really is. Hey, 
let me just go to the book you recommended uh, by Jennings. Is it Jennings? Yes, yes. The William Christian Jennings. Imagination. Mm. What did he... <laughs> My head is hurting. What, what did Europe do to religion? What happened? Even before we talk about colonizing mm. us and telling us our whatever, what happened with religion? In Europe, so that's, I mean, that's one that's, that's a really good, a good book. It's historically very uh, dense and yeah. gives the, the steps in which how this thing goes. Is that you, Europe? I mean, you know, in the, in the European Middle Ages was the, the medieval European Middle Ages was fairly religious, right? But I think there, there were some political and social context happening within Europe that I think needs to be understood. By, by a much larger audience. One, there was a tension between the Christians, the Jews, and the the the, the and the and the and the Muslims. Mm -hmm. So there was this tension, but then also you had you had a deeply a deep a deeply unequal society, mm -hmm. uh, and then you, you had you had the the plague which wiped out, and this is for me, wiped out a third, almost a third, thirty five percent of Europe. Mm. So and you had many many other conditions and there was deep witchcraft to see. So I think when within all these historical forces, uh, something very very dark happened within Europe, is that uh, religion and and this one in particular Christianity was was became not it, yes it, it was distorted not not to the extent of becoming only language of empire, but there was a there was a metaphysical replacement that happened slowly. Uh, from uh, where it was God and then man. First of all, it was God, man, and then it became God, white man, everybody else. But then with time, because of these distortions and this and and, and very many uh, very many historical stuff, what is happening within Europe, it became white man than everybody else. So the white man so, became God became God. So by the time it's being exported to the world, uh, and I think Jennings starts starts his book very interestingly when he he talks about how how when a bunch of evangelists uh, you know preaching in his neighborhood and they came to him and he was a black kid and they invited his mom to church. Invited his mom to church and he always he always wondered these guys they never never started with a conversation for uh, you guys believers uh, where do you fellowship? It was we're inviting you to church because we know you're not believers. Yeah. Like, what was that uh, hubris? Class hubris. Yes. What was that hubris that that leaves me? You're not even asking me whether uh, what faith do I ascribe to. Just like we're inviting you to church. It's a good place for your family. You get to know who who Christ is. So what happened within within that historical milieu was there's a, there was a replacement. There was a replacement of, as I said, it began with God, uh, men, and then God, men, because again, God, men, and then other religions, and then God, white man, other religions. Then when the black experience, in particular slavery, came, it there was a replacement, a metaphysical replacement, that uh, it became now the white God was removed from from the equation of of metaphysical experience. So religion just became grammar and logic and knowledge exactly but then it's yeah. not there, there was there was no a metaphysical ex no. Uh, there's no spiritual expression because now yes. as Du Bois talks writes very clearly in the souls of white folks same thing happened there was also there was uh you could tell this 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 animosity and fear and angst because of the of the white race because they replaced uh there was a metaphysical replacement of god mm. So, so whereas the the logic, the grammar of religion maintained, the soul was godless. And that explains Israel, really. Precisely. The, mm. the America, because America, America decides it's, go, it's, it's going Bible. to decide. Exactly. 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 We are forgetting for and forgetting a theological reality. Uh, I mean, you know, when, when uh, again, the logical reality when Peter asks uh, Christ Jesus and, and tells him, oh, so now, Lord, Lord, will you now restore the nation of Israel? And then and Jesus answers him and says, it's not, it is not for, it's not, it's not your place to know that. Mm. Uh, 
your place is to do what I have told you, which is to go and make disciples of all nations. Meaning, Christ didn't come to restore the nation of Israel. He came to open it up to the world. Mm. So there's even a, there's a, there's a, there's a theological failure of, of understanding that saying that it, it was not meant to to restore it's not meant to restore the political establishment of Israel. Mm. So to the fact that we are seeing a, a, a amalgamation of Christianity, American Christianity and Judaism, for me it's not even theologically accurate. It mm. goes beyond even the biblical texts. I mean, I saw a uh, because an it, was, it, was, it was not the ambit. It's not the ambit to create the a political a political state. It was uh, it was Christ's thing was to open up the blessing of the nation of Israel that was given to, to Abraham the world. to the world. He even rebukes Peter, tells him it's not your place. So it's, it's not your place. So so bothering with political matters. You know, the the part that just shocked me was I saw this white woman say, this is what the Bible says and this is what we are fulfilling. I just asked myself, you know, you are saying that America is the fulfillment of the Bible. So, I mean, that, hey, that thing just, I was just like, what? So, mm. so there's nothing... They they remove you're saying they removed the spiritual from religion and gave exactly. us a very materialist soulless religion. Mm, epistemic and, and ethical. And ethical, mm. but not mm. spiritual. Mm. Not spiritual, not metaphysical. Mm. Okay. I don't know whether we can pass through commenting on what they did in the Americas. Mm. So now we come back, come to Africa. Mm. So when they go to their, oh God, this is just horrifying. So they go to Americas. What, what's happening there? I mean, why are they so, what is that bloodletting about? Is it, how is it connected to? I mean, so once, once, once you, once you, once you, once you make this, uh, claim this truth claim is yeah. this uh uh this theological truth claim and then you replace you become uh you become god that therefore you you take the place therefore the logical conclusion of that is now the, the idea of america's manifest destiny yes once you have the logical manifest destiny uh as as a society it means that genocide is is a uh, terminology change so genocide is not genocide uh, it becomes your it becomes uh you you're doing you're doing uh you 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 you're you, you, you of, cell, I don't know exactly the natives. You, you, your moral sense changes your moral yes. sense changes so you, you you can now have a moral argument for even genocide oh because wow. you've already taken a, you've, already, you've you've replaced God, so now and you, once you replace God, you will now decide. Uh, you decide what truth truth is. Mm. So even this thing, I I laugh about it. Actually, when President Trump became president, and we were talking about truth is him and stuff, but I was laughing. I was like, this has been the edifice of the American uh, civilization oh. since it began. Truth, truthism oh, has become yeah. their thing. So I was just like, I'm just like, no, it's just it's now coming full circle. We're just seeing it at the top now, but it has become your logic of of truthism, where you could really take in a uh, manifest destiny posture. So therefore, you you'll claim what you decide is uh, you, you have a moral argument. Once you have a moral argument, genocide is easy to genocide is easy to claim because mm -hmm. you call them hip. Because again, you now because now that's when now even now uh, people like Walter Mignolo in the of modernity, he talks about the Occidents and the you know the everybody else. It becomes very easy to now say these people are less they're less human. So we're not even really killing people. We are we're helping them. We're civilizing them. We're we're making them like us. Mm. And that 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 truth claim can only come when you when you. You've made your you you've you've made yourself a god. What? That's a psychosis. Mm. So, what happened with 
Christianity in Africa. Mm. What exactly happened? Because the argument which these liberals progressives make is that uh, Europe wanted to colonize us, so they had to mm. cheat. They used Europe, uh, Christianity to cheat us. That's how we we were fools, and that's how we mm. got colonized. So, mm. what exactly happened, and mm. why doesn't that argument work? So, I, I find that argument in twenty twenty four to be very silly. You know, well, one, one, one for personal reasons it was first claimed by Jomo Kenyatta in his book. <laughs> oh, that's uh, yeah. all the Bible. Yes, close that we close and... our eyes to pray and yeah. nini nini. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. That's where it came from. <laughs> that's where it came from. So I think we, we have to go further back and, yes. and realize that, realize, I mean, first, I mean, from you're talking about 1492. Uh, you know, Pope Alexander, Alexander the Sixth divides the world into Spain and 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 Spain and Portugal, and we start now seeing uh, what's happening. This replacement, because yeah. actually it was a Pope Alexander the Sixth actually who actually did the thing, who actually took a, he actually took God's God's he, he took a God like uh, made a God like uh, papal bull mm. and dividing the world into in, to, between the, the so it's actually uh a holy man, in a sense, not a holy man, but a man who occupied the. Because we know in his history, he was he was anything but holy from the Borgia family. He had mistresses and all these other things. But he made he made a he, he did a God thing and he took up God posture and divided the world and said, even those lands, those people belong to you. So, but lack of I think, humility but, always shocks uh, me. I don't get ex it. Ex ex exactly, yeah. but I think, but the, the, but I think. Walter Rodney does this well in how you developed Africa and how he talks about what slavery did to, to Africa. Africa. Uh -huh. Yeah, and he says how, you know, for you're talking about almost 300, 400 years of people leaving the continent. People are not just leaving us the continent, it was there were warlords who, because now you've changed the political the political economy has been has been restructured. So now you have warlords who are now raiding other communities and selling other people. You have, you know, you have people within their communities. Uh, your kings and chiefs are, are selling their own people. So you, 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 you're fundamentally reconstructing a whole society over three and three two hundred four hundred years. Uh, I mean, he mentions how the kingdom of Congo, how in the in the fifteen hundreds, uh, the, many of the statues were both male and female, but by seventeen eighteen hundred, the statues were only female. That means you've changed even. Uh, the, the ontology of the society has been changed. Uh, what they perceive of truth and stuff, and, but you also made it nimble because your productive labor is leaving the continent. Uh, there are constant wars between yourselves, but also uh, along the coast and also other expeditions by uh, colonial raiders, Portuguese, Spanish, you know, all these people who are who are shipping stuff, you know, the, the British shipping people out of, out of Africa. So that creates a nimble society. It creates a very nimble, very angst society because it's really, uh, I, mean, I made this argument in my thesis, it's really, this is really Africa's uh, dark age. Mm. It's a dark age. So mm. it's really, I mean, so there's, 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 there's angst, there's superstition because things are just moving quickly. You know, there's, there's uncertainty. So when now uh, European Christianity comes, uh, finding that context, of course, now in the guise of, you know, after now's family partition of Africa, is that that social context introducing uh, uh, European Christianity, uh, which comes, which, I mean, which also has its own its own baggage, cultural baggage, because, I mean, the moral, they feel the moral superior, they wanna, they're calling the civilizing mission, abolishing slave trade, etc. As a political project, what that does to the context in which the soil in which now uh, it, 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 it's planted, two things emerge. Religion becomes uh, a pursuit of power mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. superstition. Yeah. Or super, or super, those are two things that emerge from that from that soil. It becomes a pursuit of power or just deep superstition. Yeah. And, and, again, and that's, that's the interview. And this is I'm, I'm speaking this at the level of the political project. I'm not speaking it at the at the lived experience because the lived experience is mm. different. Okay, the lived just, experience, just, yeah. Oh, just hang on. Uh, 
the missionaries were not the first people to bring Christianity to Africa. There was, of course, right. Christianity in Ethiopia. But more importantly, you remember people like Kimpavita when they were refusing mm. in Congo. Mm. So what's mm. the difference between missionary Christianity and the Christianity that uh, Queen Zinga and Kimpavita were fighting in the, mm. the 16 or 1500s? No, it's the same. It's the okay. same. Uh -huh. it's the same because because Queen Zinga was I mean when she was fighting the Congo it was they, they, they were trying to because the conversion there was slavery so the logic was the same it was the same it was it, it, there isn't any difference within the logic because Queen Zinga was trying to feel like even me I'm a Christian but these guys were like oh we, we Africa we are, we are scrambling you we want your slaves it, it was the same logic the logic doesn't change so it's just one one say, she's saying. Hmm? Uh, I'm also Christian, so that you, if I'm going that by the logic me. of Christianity, you shouldn't exactly. be taking my people because we are exactly. also Christian. We are brothers and sisters in the faith, exactly. And, so, and, it was, uh -huh. so it was the same logic, but we have to go way back because we have to go way back to early African Christianity. Uh, yes. I mean, you, I mean, you're talking about uh, second. I mean, first, first AD by three, the third AD. Christianity is beginning to, to blossom. You, you it's beginning to blossom not just in 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 Europe but in exist at this time. So no, not just in the Mediterranean world, because yeah. that's the civilizations of that time were largely Mediterranean, at least within within this within this space, because Mediterranean meaning uh Africa, which is Egypt, uh and in and this Africa, Egypt. Uh, Carthage, which is close to close to you know, after Egypt, Carthage and Hippo, which is modern day Algeria, and then uh, Sudan, Kingdom of Sudan, and then Aksum, which is Ethiopia. Those mm -hmm. were those were the, the, the major civilized, civilized kingdoms within in Africa. The other mm -hmm. side, you have uh, Israel, uh, you have India, you have China, uh, and then of course uh, Antioch, which is modern day Iraq. So you you have that, and this is now this is this is now within the Roman the Roman the Roman Empire. So it, the Roman Empire was a largely Mediterranean civilization, mm. which included parts of parts of which included parts of what we now to call the Middle East, uh, North uh, parts of North Africa, but also uh, East Africa, especially Agrum uh, uh, and China. And Ch China was a was that that was largely the the the, the Roman Empire. Early African Christianity moved through all those trade routes, and that's why we see, in fact, what people don't realize is that uh, early Christianity was actually incubated intellectually. Uh, the intellectual life, the contemplative life, and all the cultural life of Christianity was actually incubated in Africa. Mm. And but this is this is now from three A.D. to seven A.D. Now what happened? Because now the, of the divide. The divide, the divide between the church in Antioch and the church in like Alexandria. Then, of course, what we have now is now the the the, is the Islam invasion, which wiped now the African church. Mm -hmm. Didn't wipe it out completely, but it wiped in terms of wiped it out in terms of as a as as a thing. So it it came it so it came back just with the Europeans, but the bedrock uh, is still here. And uh, mm -hmm. there's actually a book. There's actually a book by I forget his name now. Uh, he he actually talks about this very well. And what we don't realize is actually the, the Apostle Mark is one who actually came to spread Christianity in Africa. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the bedrock, the intellectual bedrock of Christianity, of Christianity, what, what Christianity, what Africa, what the African mind gave Christianity was actually the contemplative life. The desert fathers who actually came were actually in Egypt, which now which they became now, now became the monks and the monasteries. They actually they actually began their you know their their pilgrimages in the desert fathers and mothers in Egypt. Mm. Uh, the intellectual life in Hippo and Alexandria, uh, the deep scholarly life was actually incubated. So actually, what Africa gave Christianity was and was actually three things: cultural life, intellectual life, and the contemplative life. Yeah. But because of seven A.D., the the, the invasion of Islam uh, wiped out wiped out the the church in Africa in terms of uh, its full expression. It remained uh, within the Orthodox Church in Ethiopia and 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 bits and pieces. It remained, 
yeah, it, is, it remained, you know, the churches that remained. So there are, there are bits and pieces, but but it's still there. The, the, the soil, the soil is still there. The soil mm. is still there. So mm. that, that's what that's a part of history we miss and we mm. don't talk about. And mm. then so all well, we begin our history. And I think that's why it's it's it, part of our problem is that we have we have absorbed the American pragmatic mind. And it's what Putin was telling uh no, uh, his come, interview. Come, come that's why on. exactly yeah. that's why Putin is beginning with is beginning with the Russian civilization with 1800, 1800 AD. This guy wants to talk about why are you changing borders now? Why should like no 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 like no no like th this thing humanity is larger than you, you know, you know, get over yourself, you know. So and I think it's the same problem when we begin with the same very useless argument of you know, or the, the white man came with the religion. No, you know he didn't. No, he didn't. Mm. Mm. No, but there's a different feel mm. because it seems like in the 1500s, all the the Portuguese wanted to know is that Africans are Christians and they've been baptized. Mm. But mm. there's a way in which the missionaries they 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 that's not enough for them. They mm. want your soul. <laughs> Actually, mm. they want your soul. They want your logic. They want your energy. Mm. They, they want everything. Mm. It's like mm. Christianity. Exactly. But keeping because also, which I like that because in 1500 AD, you are not seeing, I mean, imperialism even as a as a as a project was expanding, also becoming more sophisticated. Mm. So when the 1500 with the Portuguese, it was it, there was still at that baseline where it was okay, you're, you're a Christian, we are Christians, we even so Queen Zinga going, even in Ethiopia going, even the Ethiopians when they came, then the Portuguese said, This is not the real Christianity. Yours is it is this one looks funny. So mm. it was still it was, the debate was still the imperial debate was still very because you see the same very European cool, debate, was, super special yeah. kind of because it, it, it's the same European debate also that was happening in Europe, but also here. Yeah, that's why even when we talk about the thirty year war that led to the Westphalian state, it was a religious war. So they yeah. were still for you guys as Christians as us. It was still it was still it was that uh, racism which is defined well by the dehumanization of our people, not really about about color, but dehumanization of us. So it was still. The imperial project was, was still growing and still evolving, but when the missionary project is coming, it's now fully fledged. The thing has become racism now. Hegel has written his his madness and his class. He has told us Africans are, there, are, are, are at the bottom, and then you know Indians, Chinese, and everybody else in them between the white man is at the top. So it's already now the project is already has gained form, a soul. But the missionary and they've coming, done what they've done in the U.S. Exactly. So it's so the 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 matrix of power, you know, as as, yeah. as as the colonial scholars call it, is already formed properly. So it's oh. come. So they're coming with that baggage now. They're coming with that, even though as 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 Trevor Noah when he says that uh, appetite in South Africa is perfect perfect appetite because they went they went to America, they went to Australia, and then they went to Europe and they went to the Arctic and to India. So then it's coming to South Africa. This it thing has been put is. through properly. You go, you go too sour. You know, it's the it's the real evil. <laughs> it's the real evil. So it's the same thing mm -hmm. as well for it in our context. You know, now that you say that, I think part of our problem is that we read uh, the Europeans of the 18th century, like the Europeans of the 15th, 16th century going to the US. Those are the mm. tropes we are using. Mm. We, we haven't developed our own language for what the Europeans did in Africa. So no, no, we have whatever Black Americans produce, which is from the 16th century, uh, whatever indigenous Americans produce, that's what we are adopting wholesale without mm. contextualizing that this was, a, this was already formed by the time it reached Africa. So we got mm. a distilled version of Mm, of, of empire, of imperium, mm. of imperialism, and we haven't understood. We haven't understood how distilled it is. So we mm. use very simplistic formulas like this mm. one. Okay, going back to what's wrong with that narrative of um, the white man came, gave us the Bible, told us to close our eyes. Now he has a land, and we have the Bible. <laughs> I think it was a call to action. I, I think I don't, I don't think it was. A, I don't. For me, I look at it as it was a, it was a call to action. Not an. It shouldn't have been an intellectual statement. 
Yes, yes. It, it was you a, took it a small gun as a yeah. Um, it was logic. a call to action. Yeah, it was not, it was not. It was not an intellectual statement. It was a call yes. to action for like, hey, these guys are they are they are duping us. They're hurting us. Let's 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 mm -hmm. organize. But it's not, it was not supposed to be an intellectual statement because it's a it's one. Mm -hmm. It's intellectually insincere. Uh, by saying by saying that the white man brought uh religion because they didn't uh yeah. you know. Uh, early African Christianity was way here. Islam was way here. Islam was in Africa in 7 AD. Uh, Christianity was in Africa in actually properly from 1 AD, but like not properly, like I mean, in terms of its roots from 1 AD with, with even biblical biblical theology says that, but, but properly in terms of now churches and believers, 3 AD proper, like proper, like it's happening. And you're seeing intellectual work happening, you know. And, and as I said, even actually, and this is actually it was uh, the Harvard Harvard historian uh, Gates who actually says actually he, uh, he actually writes about it. And he says actually that the the, the uh, intellectual intellectual cultural and contemplative contribution of Africa to Christianity came from these three things. You know, the contribution of Africa to Christianity was intellectual, cultural, and contemplative. Mm. So, so, so that's what that's one. It's just it's wrong historization. You know, it's just yeah. wrong. So it's a it's a call to action. So it's emotive, but mm. then two, two, it's 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 being led by, by, by. It's it's being led by, in my view, uh, by by people who, as I say, it's that disdain. It goes back to that disdain for. Oh for mm. it's 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 african marxists but but mark marxists are not of the no not 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 of the organic intellectual level but really you know it's the you know mm -hmm. uh, exactly who, who who are saying this uh it's progressives and saying but it's not true because you you actually you actually it, and for me i feel like it's such a clever argument because it, it's, mm. it's 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 not allowing uh these people to as fanon says to take their knowledge to the people and to begin that work, that work of interrogating and to build something. In fact, even in 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 Fanon's work, it's in his psychological work, he actually he actually he doesn't disdain uh, religion. He actually says religion is actually useful. He found it useful in treating many of his patients because he said it it, it gave them a sense of hope, but also it, it helped them reimagine different pathways. Mm. So. You know, in freedom and isolation, he actually talk. He actually has a whole chapter. Where he talks about how he found it very useful in his clinical practice. So, so when when I see this argument, I feel like it's it's you made a call to action, an intellectual project, which is which is wrong. But then mm -hmm. there's a disdain, there's a disdain that you still have around, and you're quoting Marx wrongly, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're quoting it wrongly, and then to, and then it 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 doesn't allow, uh, it doesn't allow, uh intellectuals to, to take to take their skill sets to the people to interrogate this thing further to move to help them move beyond catharsis into, mm -hmm. into now world making mm -hmm. yes but you know the the intellectual elite was set up to prevent world making exactly so, exactly yeah mm -hmm. oh lord that's just so heavy to take for the soul oh dear So what's the what's the health I don't want to call it the healthy what's the way to look at religion in a way that includes world making because that has been the conversation has been blocked and funnily enough by blocking religion they blo they block the co the conversation about world making so how, how come it feel? I mean, what explains why it feels like that? Because when they say all oh, these stupid people, why are they going to this pastor and what, what, what? Then we can't even have a conversation about hope and the way to create a new world that has has no injustice. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. eh, how can oh, yeah. I mean what hap What's that operation? So, I mean, why are so I think, intellectuals and progressives that way? 
so I think so a couple of things I think is because a lot of the training 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 that that they, they went through the yeah. time they the time they were the time they were the time they were going we I don't I don't exclude my yeah, we, are there. Like we a, are there we are there <laughs> then we are going to universities universities have become fairly liberal fairly secularized yes. so so and and in fact the time the time the time what continental philosophy has become the mainstay uh, intellectual intellectual you know intellectual posture within the liberal arts liberal arts trainings and humanities that becomes a posture so it's really it becomes the time we're going to the time it's, it's now it's the philosophical arguments of human rights mm. of, of human rights the, the stuff that now becomes the stuff and then seeing how even because because the historical context of this is that by the time you, you, those are those are a real fight within i mean western western world internally between secularism and, and religion generally so secularism won the won the fight generally by the time we get to the 18th century and Hegel and other philosophers are doing, universities have become fairly secularized spaces and mm. fairly liberal spaces, whereby mm. uh, the, the liberal the liberal argument uh, was better that you need to religion needs to be uh, the, the, the starting state argument that the this the the, the, the separation uh, we need to private uh, religion needs to be a private affair and not within the ambit of pub, the public sphere. The time that's happening, that's what we imbibe. We we imbibe the we imbibe that as the as the most progressive arguments of human civilization. So we imbibe the liberal democratic model. Uh, we imbibe the arguments of human rights. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, oh, it's a the package. Judiciary. It's a package. So we imbibe that, and part of that is religion needs to be related to the to the private sphere because it doesn't have a, it doesn't have so to speak a, a more rational argument. So th that's what we imbibe. So that that's what we believe. But we don't realize this was a very internal conversation to Europe. Yes. And as they were they were having that, so we didn't we didn't ask ourselves what was our context, uh, mm -hmm. what was our context, what what was our context of having these conversations. Mm. Mm. Okay. You talked about uh about superstition and power okay about mm, yes yeah i mean within our context because i mean as i said one of the years you got mirrors are just being we have been being shipped out we are fighting we are escaping yes. you know we are you know we are we are surviving you know yes. there's a whole there's a whole there's a whole field called epigenetics that's that's actually talking and thinking about these things how just society was just being you're being hammered that you're hey, you're you're surviving you know, you're just you're moving around. You know, I have, I have this. I have this. This is a theory. This is just my own personal theory. But even what we call uh, tribes, what we call tribes, we're not actually we're not actually uh, tribes. I, I think it's like like, like whole nation. collective things. Like yeah, they were. I I just my this my own this is my own personal theory. It's not tested, but I feel like when you when you when you when you harm a society that hard over a period of time, it begins to disintegrate. Mm. That's why, for instance, the, the 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 phonetics of Meru, what we call the Meru tribe, Embu, Kikuyu, and bits of Kamba is the same. Yeah. So I feel like it was actually there's a in, in disintegration. It's almost as if how you talk about Sheng, how it becomes a language of in, in because of because of rural urban migration. Uh, there's a kind of it becomes a language of surviving within this melting pot. So I think it's the same thing that was happening that mm. there was a there were, and, and 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 this is not to say that there were there weren't kingdoms. I feel like maybe like the Baganda because them they were. I feel like communities that engage in slavery have a more intact history. Mm. And that's what, that's what that's just my argument. I feel like communities engaged, like the Baganda engaged in slavery, so they have a more intact history even of their own societies. But other communities that didn't, the disintegration of these little ethnicities. So it's because you're surviving. But if you look at the, the language phonetics across the board, this similarity means that you are one, but because you are the divide and rule, you are fighting each other, you move these other spaces, you evolve differently, but then it's really... So this is what the epigenetics find. So mm -hmm. within this space, I say just to go back in this space of this dislocation, and already talks about this actually in how developed Africa, but within this space, 
when you introduce religion in this kind of context, two things happen. It becomes a space of power and become power and becomes a space of, of superstition. Those are the two realities. Power yeah. because it yeah. becomes a space of, hey, people see, hey, if I go to these missionary schools, I go to these uh, churches, uh, schools, Hey, there's a, there's a, I'm being told when I'll become a, a DO. And we saw that, you know, our our our, our first independent uh, uh, people in Africa, you know, in most parts of Africa were people who went there. They got power. They got packs of power. So, it, so interpret it. So your soul interprets it. Your soul interprets it in that kind of way. You know now, I've just... Basically, that's, that's prosperity like gospel. That's prosperity gospel. So we talk about prosperity gospel as something beginning now. It's not, it, 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 it within that context, that's what it becomes. It becomes prosperity gospel. So there's a there's an unhealthy interpretation of the gospel because of your social conditions. Oh, 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 oh. oh. That's pro no, we talk about prosperity like it's something, you know, we only talk about it as something posaps. No. It it came with the missionaries. Well, that was prosperity gospel. Because even a lot of Kenyan elite families, the the mm. the, the patriarch was mm. was a clergy person. Was a was a prosperity gospel guy. Even the Catholics, I mean, the Catholics, and the Catholic, PCA, yeah, the, the PCA, the what we call what yes. we call the you know the old root churches. Yeah, yeah and we and we and we know even amongst them, we have this historically that they're also fighting for market share. The Quakers were who go in Western. The like kisses, the SDA. So even and this was even and because even in Europe there were still these fights, these interreligious fights for power. So the prosperity gospel was not something that came recently. Even within Europe, uh, the Dutch were, you know, the Lutheran and all this stuff. There was there was, a, there was a contestation for power. So that's one. And then two, which is not there, is that now it becomes now within us in this context, religion becomes a space for superstition, deep superstition yeah. hmm? across the board. So it becomes, you know, it becomes. So you know, we are we are seeing that logic with now like Shakahola. but it's but but it's not it's not the thing. Uh, it's not, it's 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 across the, it's across the, the it it began it began when it was in, it came to us like that. So it becomes it just becomes deep superstition. Let, let me just go back to that power part. Then I'll I'll also still come to superstition. The, I think this explains, although you could comment, you know, I've been wondering why in church today, it's so important for people to have positions and to even now, me when I was young, I never had people being called elder so-and-so, deacon so-and-so. Now I'm hearing these terms, it's become like a title. It's become mm. so, imp and then it has become so important to go through the whole hierarchy of the church that is present at the at mm. meeting. Mm. And and there's a way in which people really need these positions. And then it has just occurred to me why, why those things start to translate into political power. Because isn't that what the mm. clergy were asking for when mm. they were negotiating with Ruto? They were saying, exactly. oh, you were supposed to give us this ministry, a ministry of reconciliation, Sijui Nini. <laughs> so, exactly. So it hasn't stopped. The church is still Doesn't. stepping stone to power. Mm. It's, 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 it became tied to the kingdom of Caesar. Exactly, because it became tied to the political economy of the of the post-colonial, the first colonial, but also post-colonial state. So it becomes tied to that ecosystem. So what we saw now, even in 2002 elections, was just as just as there was a replacement, the replacement of the old guard was in total. It wasn't just it wasn't just the old guard in terms of dynasties in the sense of uh, you know the dynastic families within politics, but it was also even within the cultural and religious spaces that replaced mm -hmm. them, because this old edifice was the what we call the old the root churches, you know, the Catholics, mainstream. Anglicans, yeah, exactly mainstream, you know, the Presbyterians, all this stuff. But then this new guard comes with the whole new political economy that was the evangelicals that now, even as they're now exerting power and expanding and the charismatics and all these other people. So it was, it is really within this, within this conversation is really a conversation of competition of power. So that's what I said, which is really, a, which is prosperity gospel expanded. Mm. So not just prosperity, but 
power power politics even within uh, the religious spaces. So that's that's on one hand, and then of course, as I said, uh, superstition becomes now a mainstay. Okay, so what's the superstition? Just explain that. What do you mean? So the by superstition. So yeah. superstition is 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 what Du Bois said in his in his essay, uh, Black Souls of Black Folks. But when he talks about double consciousness, mm. that's no, that's now introduced into our psyche as a as an African double consciousness. Where it's very strange, you know. Even it happens today. I mean, I don't know if you. I was being told this story actually on Tuesday, and a, a friend of mine was telling me a story about uh, her her sister who couldn't give birth and how you know on one hand she is she goes to church to see and on one hand she's also she's also consulted with uh, with, uh exactly and then on the other hand it's, it becomes that the double consciousness of our souls that's now the the, the the outcome of this superstition where you become we conf we, we we conflate faith with paranoia and we conflate faith with paranoia and and witchcraft because faith faith you know like apostle paul talks about and this is actually a, he makes a, a metaphysical claim say faith is a substance of things it's hoped hope. for yeah the key word for me is substance in, yes. in metaphysics, we're talking about yeah. being and being the substance the, it's, an, it's an ontology so it means there's something there's a there's a metaphysical claim to faith. Yes. We replace that. So there's no substance. So it, there's no substance. So it's it becomes uh it becomes uh it becomes it becomes it's no longer a metaphysical claim. Now it becomes uh it's actually witchcraft. So what we what we do, we introduce we introduce faith, faith stops becoming a substance of things hoped for and things to come. It becomes it becomes uh we, we, we replace it's that like a we... formula a fetish exactly if a i fetish. do this this will happen exactly it becomes Direct witchcraft cause effect exactly we to so introduce witchcraft into the edifice of the of of the, of mainly christianity but also even islam uh also islam uh islam and other and other and other you know, mainland religions in Africa. So witchcraft becomes so uh we're all sisters in Uganda. So you have Christian which so actually people think oh it's that's African witch doctors, no no, but there's a distortion, this there's a deep distortion of the faith. Mm. You know, that explains why I, I always find it strange the way Christians are very afraid, Kenyan Christians. They are, mm. you know, like one time I posted uh, that prayer of Jesus on the cross, my Lord, my Lord, why have you forsaken me? Hey, mm. like Christians freaked out. Then I'm like, what is in the Bible? They <laughs> freaked out. It's like, oh, now we are going to, to, I don't know, to smear Christianity. We are going to threaten it. You know, mm. God doesn't like to be doubted. But mm. that's superstition then. Exactly. It's, it's, it's not, not faith. faith, superstition. So and that, and that and that and that's 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 mainstream cross mainstream churches and other churches as well. What? Hey, that's a lot to think about. So, what a a faith that liberates what what does what do we need to do to have faith in fact it's not even a faith that liberates because it sounds like we don't have faith mm -hmm. and and in fact actually that's what i see i these days in my classes as students have given up they mm -hmm. they just have no hope that anything will change they even say mm -hmm. i think even that's what they said in darius's conversation on the elephant mm. the, the gen z mm. that yeah. what's the point of engaging in politics when nothing will change like a lack of faith <laughs> and a lack of hope mm, it is that's even even their slogan the gen z slogan the lulu is a new solulu yeah and then they respond that that's actually the, you know being so it's it's a it's a it's a despair 
Yes. It's a it's a despair. Mm. It, it's a despair. So what's the work that we have to do to have faith and to have hope? Mm. And and I, of course I'm not restricting it to clergy, but it would be good to mention them. So, 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 so I, as I say, so the, there's a, this conversation is in twofold to your answer. One, mm -hmm. when, when, when we go to your answer, I think I need to say something is important. Within the body politic of the church, the body politic, not just of the church, but even, let me say, of the religious ambit across the board, not just Christians, Islam, because those, those who struggle, they also realize, those, they also struggle, with, they also struggle with the same thing because of the social context, yes. uh, the soil, the soil in which the word, whether it's whether it's the word of the Quran or or, or the word the context, uh, which is uh, operating, is those are the two realities: superstition and power. Those are the two realities that that they they the two walls that that they face, and and unfortunately, uh, within the body politic, uh, very little very little has been done because it's not a it's not a pastoral problem. Yes. It's an intellectual, it's an education problem. <laughs> Good. That's hmm? so depressing because it's, 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 talk about it and people have refused to have it's, the it's conversation. Not a, it's not a pastoral problem. It's an education problem. It's an intellectual problem. It's a and within, within that case, a very specific, it's a theological problem uh, that needs to be done. Or projects within that space that needs to start being done. Because at the at the Ecclesi ecclesiological level, which is not the, the, the church level, which is at the community of believers. To be fair, and I think as I grow older, a lot of good work happens. At the pastoral level, you know, people, what was idea? When I say idea, you know, people are, you know, people, someone you die, someone buries you, you know, you're getting married, someone comes and does your wedding, you know, you have a, you have a, you have a, you have a, you have job loss, people come around you and help. So the pastoral problem, it's intact at the ecclesiological level, which is like the the body of Christ, the church as the body of that that is is working. Yes. So uh, the crisis is at this other level, at the intellectual, it's an intellectual problem, and as and a, and then and it a, goes to the politics. Exactly, because now it's it's an educational problem. The, the, we don't have any, we have not done any kind of projects to liberate that at that level, and I think that that's that that's 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 the space we have to start entering and thinking about and writing about and reflecting about to it's that there's a gap there's there's a gap in the body politic there's a huge gap in the body politic that hasn't been addressed but i don't know whether how you can uh, include this one of the things i am i have heard and i've written about is that the church part of our our education problem is the church because mm. uh, the government cannot have the resources to provide uh, schools to all children. So the mm. church has held the government by, you know, because uh, that's how they negotiate. They negotiate at the level of schools. So mm. uh, what that means is that when it comes to education conversations, the church has stuck there and they are refusing to move they are stuck in this uh, intellectual problem you're talking about. Mm. Um, I don't know. I don't know whether I'm asking a question or me. I don't know. Mm. But they are intertwined with the intellectual problem that you're, you're mm. talking about. So how can mm. the church do that work when they are actually the cause of the intellectual problem? Mm. Oh, so, so, so that's a good question. And yeah. So I think it's, I don't. I don't think. As I said, I don't think that the, the crisis. The crisis is not at the ecclesiological level, meaning yes. the body of Christ. So I'm not talking about uh, the level of the pastoral problem. The problem is not there. In yes. fact, in fact, in fact, those guys do a good job. They 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 are helping people. The crisis is at the. It's when I when I say it's a theological problem. Yeah. It, we 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 are yet to have a theological project that projects not one. That supersedes the state, oh, because yeah. once because once you supersede the state, yeah. you supersede the project supersedes the state. Uh, it's 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 a world making project. Yeah, 
yes. that you, we have to go beyond Euro modernity. Yes. So uh, the body politic of the church, which is a theological question, has to start thinking of itself. Uh, I mean, and, and it's not, it's, it's, it has happened before. Uh, St. Augustine, in his book, uh, The City of God, does this kind of project. And, uh, you know, we know the story, the Roman Empire was collapsing and everybody blamed the Christians and saying the reason why, the reason why this thing is collapsing is because the Roman Empire became Christian. Yeah. And it, and 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 he did that kind of project. He talked about the two the two kingdoms, the kingdom of heaven, and the kingdom of earth. So he he had to the project had to go beyond. He had to go beyond the current edifice of the world that was collapsing, which was the Roman Empire. Mm. Mm. And now mm. the American world is collapsing, but it's our collapsing. is stuck. It's within. stuck within. So it the project has to go so it can release. Christ Christianity from that from that from from empire. Oh, that one won't happen. <laughs> I, can't, I can't see Kenya doing that. They are too attached. No, they they can't. Another thing, I don't know whether you know this, eh? Because mm. I was trying to study the the shift. There was a time I was writing a paper on evangelical Christianity and mm. And I found mm. out that uh, the Americans were very deliberate after independence in capturing the theological space. Yes, yes, and yes. And most of the clergy who were taken to study abroad, they all did missiology. Yes. There, there were very few, a few people I know, but very few who <laughs> did actual theology. Theology, yes. Yeah. So they were Correct. all doing theology, uh, uh, um, evangelizing to the natives and that kind of thing. Mm. And, and, and that's part of the education problem. Mm. Because now that's, that's the mentality that is in theological education, you know, mm. studying to the natives, uh, this cultural thing of proving that mm. Christianity is... is Correct. And that, that kind mm. of thing that us literature people do, which is also still irritating for me. Mm. So there, there was an Americanization of, of theological education and its mm. replacement with Bible studies. Mm. Ah, so no, that, Joe, that, that work, it's not me. I don't see it happening <laughs> in the next 10 years. So, I mean, so, so, yeah. So, I mean, so I, I, I have this, I have this, uh, so a couple of things. One, if you look at the trajectory of theological uh, theological uh, advancements, particularly talking about, I mean, there are many, but if you talk about from, you know, you can just we just just cluster Black American and African, and mainly there are a couple of tra trajectories that 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 we have taken. So the first trajectory was was with Cohn, right, with James Cohn, which, and, and then he, and he, and he brought everything together, Negro spirituality, all of that Negro spirituality, together with the you know, Black liberation theology, right? Mm -hmm. And and even, even before that, you can even go and say it was liberation theology from Latin America and stuff like that. And then, uh, and, and, Corn, corn, corn contextualize it for the black experience, the black American experience, black liberation theology. So you can see that trajectory from liberation theology to black liberation theology. And then at the same time, uh, as Corn was doing that, Mbiti, uh, Jonas Mbiti, uh, you know, uh, his book, Philosophy, African Religions and Philosophy, right? Uh, and, you know, is an attempt of now starting to start the whole uh, African, African, African Christian theology. And and his was more of a, a native project, right? And you're yeah. saying that you know that you know all all humans are religious, but Africans are particularly religious. And that if you look at our own African societies, that there was a religiosity. So you know, so he was trying to juxtapose uh, uh, African religions with, with Western Christianity and saying, you know, uh, it was a it was an attempt. I think he was trying to qualify our humanity, uh, at least. Uh -huh. I don't, of course. It, Which we, is what the literature be, people were doing by saying, "Oh, exactly. we have literature, but it's just like other literature." Exactly, exactly. So it was a, an apologetic 
if it's of course yeah. right now with history and, and time we have criticized we can critique it in other ways but i think that was that that was that that was Mbiti's attempt one of his attempts and then after that we see and we see the fight the fight between corn and Bitty. it was a very heated fight yeah was like ah, you you're not doing liberation you what's this you're doing you know yeah. you're saying you know we're translating the bibles into kikuyus and stuff so and i think for me that's my critique now of Mbiti because that translation to that kind of stuff it didn't there was no social there's no con there's no uh there, there was there was there wasn't any uh proper analysis of our social context and saying actually this translation into this thing is, is still part of the imperial problem translating into the native stuff but it's part of because it's still part of the native the native problem clustering natives into into tribes, tribes. And yeah Exactly. So, so you still play, you're still playing within that Western, you're still, you're still playing that imperial logic. So you see that debate within Korn and BT, and then mm -hmm. we saw uh, Tutu, Desmond Tutu, who tries to, to synthesize the two, right? Yeah. With uh, reconciliation theology, truth justice, which now became truth justice and reconciliation. Yes. Same trying to reconcile the two. And then mm -hmm. and then after that, I think that the, uh, the next best attempt, uh, I think, was now Professor, Professor Mugambi. Uh, in you know when he talks about uh, reconstruction theology, in terms of trying to create a new paradigm, uh, you know when he talks about you know, you know like now you know, cold war is over, because so so I think his political you analysis get your act together. Exactly now now we can now do that. So I think that's that that's, that's a progression of theology, and I think now, uh theology for me for me and i when i think about it i think that there are a couple of things that are opportunities is that because as, as kalundi said omaga says brilliantly uh western social science has collapsed yes. there's nothing it can offer the world so i think for me the more useful thing is to have a, a african social science and theology mm -hmm. to start having a conversation yes yes you need to hold hands so, so there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a exactly so there's, there's, there's an understanding of of social, political, historical context, but also addressing the theological concerns within that kind of intellect, theological, intellectual reflection. I think that that's the, to my mind, I think that that's 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 a more useful project to start undertaking within that direction. But there's a problem with social sciences in Kenya. Hey, Joe, that one they can't because 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 the social science in Kenya is still Western social science yes. and has collapsed. Yeah, mm. we we have not embraced uh people like Moy Jonathan Moya who criticized uh social science, Western social science, many years ago. Uh, you know, Tandi Kem Kandari were talking about uh, you know, when you're talking about writing about economics and how it affects Africa, Olotunji, all this. Well, many of guys have written about this stuff. And I think the interesting. Not Claude Ake, the other one. Cla uh, it's Cloud Peter Ake, and there's the other Peter one, Ake. Ake, Peter Ake. Peter Ake, Peter Ake, yeah, yeah. With, his, with, his, with his of colonialism in the two publics. Mm. Yeah, so they start having a conversation with theology. So, I, and I think mm. that that's a more useful uh, wild making project. So, because when, you, when we have that conversation, uh, my own argument is that, that that conversation is the next frontier of governance work. Because we have tried governance within the liberal democratic model, it has failed. Constitution, yeah. That does failed. So we are stuck. And I think that's where we, we, we tried governance within left politics. Uh, first, we tried government, you know, to left politics, uh, you know, with the labor unions in the 60s, that failed. Uh, we tried, then we, and then we went into governance within. Uh, Bretton Woods, IMF, SAPs, that mm -hmm. you know, just failed. That almost destroyed us. Yeah. And then we, and then now we did the liberal democratic model, the human rights, ETC, uh, which which is still there. And I mean, by and large, I mean, it has made a bit of progress, but generally it has it has hit its glass ceiling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have passed. We, are, we Kenya is one of the most progressive countries in passing laws, uh, in, as regards corruption. Yet we are still pretty corrupt. So it's, it's, in the, it's in the water. It, it's, it's in not the water. A, it's not a legal thing mm. that you, you can't fight it legally. You have to. Mm. That's why I was saying to fight corruption, we need an anthropological analysis and a psychological exactly. one. Exactly. And those people are very far away. They are still telling us about disorders, and I don't know what. Uh, exactly. Anthropology exactly. is talking about tourism. 
I mean, <laughs> the intellectual project in Kenya is so messed up. You can't ah. Mm. I mean, we are so messed up, so messed up, and we are not seeing a crisis. No, this no, we're not. I can't understand it. I can't. Mm. Okay, so let's uh, because we've talked mainly about the intellectual project. Let's now just go back to just the human on the ground experiential. What's mm. the importance? of faith and spirituality and why can why is it wrong to equate those to missionary christianity because when you when you do that plainly simple you're denying your humanity plainly mm. simple and this, this this is not a religious statement it's a philosophical statement yeah. human beings actually it was actually it was john locke i don't know i'm quoting john locke i don't particularly like like, <laughs> like 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 most of his work but i mean he said it Human beings are religious, and we are, we are, we are religious as human beings, as human creatures. Yes. Even which is interesting, we we engage in religious conversations without even knowing we engage in religious conversations or even postures. Yes, mm. Mm. the belief of God, because uh, it's it's not it's not a it's not a Christian conversation. It's a conversation of philosophy of religion. Yes, mm. conversations around life after death. Meaning, purpose. Yeah. yeah. All all these are religious questions because we are religious as human beings. Uh, we we. And it's, it's the technique. beyond the material and the exactly physical. Con it, even even the idea of the soul and mm. consciousness are religious conversations. Mm. So it's not a question of faith because faith is now a particular uh, belief. You know whether it's Islam, whether it, whether it's Abrahamic faiths or Eastern religions or even atheism, it is that that's a question of faith mm. because it's now pegged on particular stuff. But at the level of just humanity, we are all religious. Yes. Mm. Even the conversations of how we love is a religious conversation. Yes. Mm. Love is a religious conversation. It, it meaning uh, religious conversation meaning beyond our physical and material world. Exactly, exactly. When you say you love somebody, it's not. I mean, you you yes. they, you can show them you love them, but yeah. what you feel More is than. religion. What you feel is a deep that deep connection is a is a religious is is part of your makeup as a religious being. And and when you want to express it, you call upon the gods and. Exactly, and you and you do poetry. Yeah, do even 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 the ambit of even aesthetics comes out of comes out of uh, comes out of the religiosity of human beings. Yeah, mm. the appreciation of art, beauty, all that, all that is is that part mm. of us that is mm, that desires. Is that is that it's it's really the our our souls doing reaching out for something deeper. Yes. And connecting with the earth, we I mean the universe that we are in. Exactly. And and asking those questions, because there are many questions, life after death, questions yeah. of meaning, do, are miracles there, do angels exist? Even the problem of evil is a is a is a yeah. religious question. The problem of evil, they talk about imperialism, and there is people talking about oh, that's an evil conversation. That has to be a religious conversation you're having, and you're saying I'm not religious. What's wrong with you? You know, I wondered now that you've said it, I wondered why Kenyans can't use the word evil for various things, you know, like, mm. you know, like our pred the way we are predators of our children and their future. Mm. We are unable to have that conversation because we are we we don't allow ourselves to go beyond the material. Right. Absolutely. So people can't see the spiritual. We are pragmatic. That... It's, it's what Putin Putin, Putin talked about was... Americans and 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 Kenya. Since we are we are we are we are we are we are we are, we are up there as a client state, we, are, we we also have that Western American pragmatism, which is which is as you said, I think it's, it's materialism and uh, it's childishness. It it's, and 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 for me, it's childishness because as as we are religious, it was again again up. Apostle Paul, when he's when he's talking, I think Church in Corinth, so in telling them, I rather have I, I, I desire of you to graduate from taking milk to hard food. Mm. Mm. 
taking me meaning meaning you're still engaging in in very petulant material forms of religious and spiritual life and even political life they were us elevating into hard food where we're now engaging in philosophical thought theological reflection historical analysis political economy you know mm-hmm. conversations of love and world making we, we are we are we are we are still at we're still at baby food we're still at baby food the same the same as it looks religiously the same thing in political and social life we are babies mm. 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 We're, we're a society of petula we are petulant tantrum tantrum mm. throwing petulant toddlers yes yeah mm. yeah Speaking of the Putin conversation, maybe we can end there. Yeah. Mm. Oh, Tucker Carlson was irritating to me, but what did you think of <laughs> He irritated I, I, me. I couldn't believe it. I was no, tolerating I think, I think, his question. <laughs> I think he represents the American mind and where the That's... American civilization, where, where it is. I think is an archetype of where, yeah. of, of where civilizations generally don't collapse because especially empires generally generally don't collapse because of what's happening outside it's yes. it's, it's it's internal weakness mm. and which is interesting uh the uh the the the, the philosopher and political scientist uh, when you went to america it's, why am i forget why i forget his name now the french what is his name <sighs> My, uh, Oh okay. my, what am I forgetting? Is yes, okay. Alexis de Tocqueville, exactly. Thank you. Thank you so much. When he went to America, now he was impressed in the 18th century. He went to America and he was impressed by the levels of education, uh, the levels of discourse at the not, not at the university level, just at you know, in the public sphere, in bars, salons, uh, you know, in bus parks, etc. And he was impressed because of impressed of the American democracy, because you're saying this is what is energizing, it's just the level of public discourse was high. Unfortunately, I mean, uh, that interview exposed the, the the collapse of public discourse in American society. That there's the internal decay. Yes. Uh, they, you know, they they confuse they confuse pragmatism to childishness. Mm. You know, mm. you know, I, you know, I have, you know, I have a, my three year old daughter. You know, would 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 when. I gave her a snack and tell her it's not time for snack time. She's and she starts crying because her, her mind, she's a toddler, so she's she's pragmatic. I want now because I'm hungry. Yeah. But it's not her time because we're building a routine for her. For you just don't, don't eat the whole, you don't eat, you don't eat, you don't eat 24 hours. Mm. You know, you, you know, you have to manage your, your portions and your diet. Yes. So we so we con- we confused American pragmatism. Uh to what and that's the addiction system that people like John Dewey gave them. To actually petulantness it's actually childishness you so you know same similar thing in roman empire when it was collapsing there's a level of that they conflated pragmatism to not liking history to to not not being able to theorize and to philosophize and to 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 contend with contradictions of communism love intimacy things like that but i think that's what we saw in the, the interview yeah. Ah, yeah, we saw we saw that because Putin was contending with bigger historical questions, and oh. he, Tucker Carlson was <laughs> not up to the task. And and that and I, and I think that's where the the American mind is today, because yeah. the internal contradictions of the society is as they collapse. You know, you, you can actually see the petulantness, the childishness, the you know the false bravado, but it's you know mm. it's, it's it's hollowness. You know, it's, it's a whole lot of the division of the soul societies is, is crumbling. They are, they have they have the collapse with wisdom social science, but also the collapse of 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 the, the narrative. Mm. Mm. So I, 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 I was particularly irritated by what he said about Christianity because mm-hmm. when Tucker Carlson was looking at Christianity, it was like a theory. It's something mm. to apply. So you take the Bible and you apply it to situations, but what Putin was talking about is sort of like the soul, the the world mm. outlook. It's not about it's... Uh, I believe this, so I apply it. Yeah, God, so baby food. So it's what Paul talks about: baby food. 
So yeah. the society is crumbling. So now it's become it's it's maybe for, because children are usually at the the basic levels of learning, mm. usually throat learning, right? Mm. Mm. And that, that's that that's 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 important for at that stage, at the toddler stage, at lower primary, it's rot learning. But you have because now you I need to feed you content at that level, rot learning. Yes. That's where like you know the Islams have the madrasa, which just just you just it's just it's a rot learning. You just it's it's not cramming. It's just it's, it's, the, at the first level is just rot learning where you just you just need to have content. What like, was what I was trying to tell people about CBC, but they couldn't hear me. They were like, but, but you have to bad. I don't know what. But oh. you have to transition. You have to yeah. transition from rote learning yes. to now connecting dots, to now yes. philosophizing, the, theorizing, to application. Yeah. They, they, so that yeah. interview for, to my mind, the American mind is stuck at rote learning. Yes. Is that, that is what you said, that literariness mm. of, of, or, or even in their theology. For, for read the Bible literally for like that's only the way you can that's where you can translate you can theology for, mm, for for you know God created the world in six days it was literally six 24 hour days but we don't but we, we forget also that services a day for me is 1000 years not thousand for me is like a day so it leaves us with a kind of tension where yeah. it might it, it might have been six days we don't know why it have it have been six episodes or six seasons or six moments you know or six well, moments something other than six you know exactly exactly their minds can't it's what uh louis gordon calls te teleological suspension suspension exactly yeah they they their mind can't suspend and i've noticed even kenyans they can't they exactly. can't suspend. if i say mm. i it literally means me this body there's no mm. sense of I could it could be a metaphor for people around mm. me. It could be a metaphor for anybody who wishes to identify with hey Kenyans, they can't do that. No, they, they find can't. it painful. It's a very very mm. painful. Exactly. Now, to contextualize now has become literal like that. Mm. Even worse yeah. than what we had before in, in that mm. philosophical sense. Mm. Yeah. Maybe uh, I forgot to ask about the the discover that thing of discovery. I forgot to ask about it when we were talking about uh, the history of European Christianity. The popes, the that what is the, that the, doctrine of discovery? The doctrine of discovery, yes. Yeah, mm. I don't know. My the, the treaty of the, the treaty of Dosidalis, Yeah, so it's, it's basically it or something. You know, for me, yeah. it's 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 this is just my own person. It's it's one of the most profound theological undertaking that has happened in the last hundred years. Maybe just tell Kenyans what that doctrine of discovery is. So, so I mean, so in fourteen ninety two, uh, Alexander the sixth, you know, from the Borgia family. You know, the Borgia family was a wealthy uh, Italian family. They went to all sorts of weird things, you know, uh, sorts of weird things as a family. And one of them became Pope. Uh, of course, I mean, then then even the Pope who are buying into the political, uh, into the political stuff. So, I mean, you're buying into that stuff. But in 1492, uh, a series of of, of pap papal bulls, but the more, even some began in, uh, in 13, 1368, but uh, 1358, but the more, at least there, there were two that were more important, 1492 and 1498. 1492, I think, was one of the more important ones, which was the doctrine of discovery, which is actually what I was telling you, the, the replacement of now the European with God. Because oh, the doctrine of discovery, yes. the doctrine of discovery gave the Europeans uh, a wrong, uh, again, it's a theological statement, gave the Europeans uh, the right to have dominion, not, not, not over all living not over sea creatures and animals, but over all living beings. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So so again, so that, that was a wrong so that, because uh the book of Genesis, uh God gave man the right of dominion, not over fellow men, but over everything else. Yes. So but the doctrine of discovery gave European that's that's actually the in terms of at a policy level, 
that was actually now the replacement of God with man, the yeah. European man at a policy yeah. level. Yeah. Mm. Like now the, the 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 like now the, the the intellectual, philosophical, all this stuff culminates at the policy level with the doctrine of discovery, where there's a replacement of God with man. Where now the the yeah. exactly now they were given dominion over everything, including fellow men who are not Europeans. Mm. So and that natural discovery now introduces now uh, we now see that it's also the story of now slavery, racial capitalism, uh, European Christianity, uh, you know, all and 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 basically Even the empire. Law. I had, the law. I had settler colonialism. So let, so yeah. then now we now see now after that now we now see philosophers like John Locke with his principle of uh, property now justifying. Now, come to, not to have a philosophical logic to know the doctrine of discovery. Now, to basically now they are they are building they are building the they are building a white ontology as God figures over the rest of the world. And after that, now with all philosophers, Locke, Hume, uh, Hobbes, and every and all other Western thinkers, now building, uh, basically creating, uh, creating the 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 European man. Uh, which culminates in eating themselves in yes. World War in the in the Second European World War yeah. with, with Hitler's idea of Ubermash. What's that? The Ubermash, the Superman. Oh, the Hitler's what? idea of the Ubermash, the the the, the Nazi, the na Nazism is this thing. It's log in its full conclusion. Because That's why they had these big Germans, even their people, exactly blue but eyes, blue muscular. eyes. Blue Blue exactly. eyes, muscular blonde. blue eyes. Yes, it, the culmination of that nice European war of 1939 to 1945, the Ubermash. You know, you, you create that it's a German word for the superior man, man of the you know the, the superior man. So basically the Ubermash now becomes takes a level of God. And, and this logic continues within the within Western culture. We don't we just don't see it, but it also it also continues. Ah, you can feel it. It also continues with a with these superhero comics, mm. with first with with uh, James Bond. Of course, we know James Bond is coming at the back of em the British Empire uh, crumbling, and then, then they need to exert their cultural space of creating this this spy with Superman and all this other other stuff that we watch. It's it's all part of this logic of because they're all white figures, right? Part of this logic of of projecting the white man as a godlike figure to the rest of the world. So uh, that that's what the Pope revoked. Exactly. So yes, to make the conclusion, the good Pope, the good Pope of ours, Pope Francis mm -hmm. <laughs> from Latin America, <laughs> we, we, we insist there's a there's a, such a fundamental shift that he he revokes the doctrine of discovery ex nihilo. Mm. Mm -hmm. The theological claim of the white race was revoked in 2023. 2023. What mm. a joke. All those years. All those years. I mean, the, the irony by another holy man. Mm. What? Although I had, there's an argument that the indigenous Americans have been saying that it's still not enough, but I, it's, mm. it's a, a technical issue that I, I can't recall of no. it, but they say. It's, no, no. I, I, I think so. At the, at, at the policy level, it's not enough, right? Mm -hmm. at, yes. the, at the policy level, it's not enough because I mean, there are conversations on reparations. Like now, fine, you've revoked, but what happens? Yeah. But at the theological level, at the level of religious imagination, it's extremely profound. Mm -hmm. Extremely profound. But it hasn't sunk, I don't think, in the white imagination, in the white Christian yeah. imagination. Did they even notice? Yeah, no. They barely reported it. I mean, me, I was finding out about it a year, almost a year later. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't think it hear was. when it had. Uh, I thought it was something that should have made global headlines. I think it was. I think people. Which for me, I liked it. Was, I liked the fact that it was actually it went under uh, because yes. of the blowback. Because of the blowback that uh, would have happened. Mm. Oh, but I mean, okay. it's. it's it, yeah, for me, it was, it was most profound, most profound uh, theological 
rectification of 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 the human society globally. Mm. Mm. Okay, this has been such an enlightening conversation. Uh, could you end with something on hope? And I don't want to mean is there hope that kind of cheap, cheap optimism mm. thing, but. Mm. So of course there's hope, but how do we access hope? Because mm. me, what I'm seeing in class every day is despair. Mm. And, and despair at the level of not that there's no hope, but there's no need. I mean, I don't know how to explain it. It's like the students don't see, they don't, I don't know how to put it. I don't want to, to talk about optimism. It, there's just... Mm. a lack of consciousness about mm. what hope does for the human being i think yeah that's mm. it. um okay. that's what bothers me it's not that they are hopeless mm. but it's just that thing of not knowing that hope is essential to our humanity so i don't know right. if you can say something about that and we can finish on that point so i mean so i think i think the reason why there isn't hope is because uh our minds are still stuck within uh, the space, as I said, the catharsis. So we're still stuck there. So like your students, uh, I'm sure it, this, the spaces they find excitement is when they go clubbing. Yes. I'm, I'm certain. And when they do drugs, because yes. th that gives them the catharsis. Yes. Uh, but you can't, as we, as we as we have agreed, you can't stay at the level of catharsis. Catharsis is good, but you can't you can't stay at the level of catharsis. So I think there's there's a space for uh, there's a space, especially the, especially if students you have know, students they are reading, so there's a space for them beginning to engage far beyond their catharsis, mm. far far beyond their catharsis. There's a there's a hope. There's that journey of engagement of catharsis is a journey of hope itself. Yes. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. It's a, it's a journey because now you're beginning to come out of that. It's a journey of hope because a journey of enlightenment, journey of uh your you know, as you're you're in the world but not of the world because you're you're you're, you're engaging the day-to-day -day governance challenges, though there's a problem, you're beginning you you're beginning to move away from them. You're able to see you're elevating yourself. Is that you're doing logical suspension? Yeah, because you're engaging away from and that's what I think it was Colonel talking about when engaging that that suspension is because now you're you're moving from the catharsis, you're holding things in tension and you're able to to grapple with the human condition. And within this case, the, the post-colonial African condition in a much more uh, robust, robust way. Uh and then and then two, is also at the, at the level of community. And mm -hmm. I think this, this conversation was really uh you know theological and uh we, we didn't we didn't go into the uh, other Abrahamic faiths, you know, Islam or Judaism and other stuff. We, we focus more on the clergy and the Christian stuff. I think that there's 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 there's, there's importance to engage with religion, no, not not at a level of disdain, particularly for you know for intellectual and progressives, but also there's also there's also merit for engaging with with at the ecclesi at the ecclesiological level, which is at the level of the body of Christ. Yes, mm. and, and not disparaging people who did mm. the human thing but ended up in the wrong place. Exactly, exactly. Mm. And and as we and as we move and as we move and and for and for intellectuals like you know like myself and other people, I think I think it's that thing for beginning to now say as you know let's not disdain this thing let's engage with it. Yes, let's engage yeah. with it. Yeah. yeah, because my argument, my current argument, because I've been I've been thinking about this for the last couple of years. The trajectory of 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 society, African societies, especially after the doctrine of discovery, was we fought for slavery, and you know, we fought for slavery. No, not Wilberforce, and you know, that that's that's not correct. Yeah, I mean, fine, they abolished it and they're abolitionists, but this came at the back of really slave revolts. Mm. <laughs> you know, it was a it was a Haitian revolution and yes. what was happening stuff. So we fought for slavery, and then of course. It was abolished, and then uh, and then colonialism happened. Uh, Our ancestors they, fought it. Yeah, fought it. He just the internal logic. Just he couldn't. They couldn't sustain it. And also, traditions in Europe. Uh, we finished that. 
then we got this thing called independence. And then we we have done many things in between there. And then we have fought authoritarian regimes, military military coups in West Africa and South Africa. Then it began the wave of past economic reforms with subs that didn't work pretty well. And then we went into political reforms with constitutionalism. Then we, we began that journey of constitutional, the liberal democratic journey that culminated in many places across Africa with constitutionalism, law, policy, etc. And I think uh, that are some gains, of course, but I mean, generally, that, that culminated with the end of Western social science. So I think for me, the next frontier of of governance is, uh, I've been saying, is theological reflection, and that that alongside uh, an African social science, that integration, I think, will, will is, is will be more useful to us as as uh, Africans to start thinking about that as as a governance project. Mm. Mm. That one. <laughs> it was, anyway, let me be hopeful. <laughs> but I don't think it will happen in the universities. Our our studies have become about superstition, meeting the mm. the what do you call rankings? Um and power. Yeah, so it's, it's, a, a, it's, yeah. A, it's a it's a religious yeah. grammar that is also within other yes. spaces, not just within yeah. the within religious spaces, but the whole public sphere. So it's about power superstition. Yes. Mm. Oh, yeah. oh mm. I haven't seen it that. Yes. Mm. That's what mm. yeah, okay. Thank you so much, <laughs> Joe. This has given me a lot of food for thought. We'll be back mm. uh, with to continue the conversation, but thank you so much for... No problem, Wendy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. I, I I hope your viewers uh, enjoy this conversation as much as I have. It's also yeah. given me things to think and write about.